Only an insane person does the same thing repeatedly and expects a different result. Ask your neighbor, do you have a voter's card? You are not a human being in Nigeria, or educated, a, a businessman, a woman, a homeowner, worker, or you guaranteed your freedom, except government says you are or can. Yet, while we are busy building our career, education, businesses, etc., we fail to participate in selecting or electing the people in leadership that will determine whether we do these things, live or die. Today, the cost of living in Nigeria is increasing geometrically. It's a notorious fact that the universities are on strike. We import almost everything despite the abundance of arable land and natural resources. Insecurity is now our new normal. Youth un unemployment is no longer discussed among political leaders. Yet, 80% of the unemployed youth don't have voters card to determine who governs them. Majority of the university teachers would rather wait to go on strike than register to vote in credible leaders. And even when they participate in re as returning officers, most of them are induced to compromise the process. Yet, all of them go sit down for bar and staff club every evening to complain about bad governance. May they not worry, strike will soon rain pass. Less than 50% of our religious faithfuls who have borne the brunt of the incessant violence and insecurity in the land are waiting for their imams and pastors to see vision whether they should participate in voting or not. I laugh. Our businessmen and women and the rest of us whose take home pay can no longer take us home. They wait for Jerry Rollins or Chief Ghani Fahemi or some liberators from somewhere to come liberate them when all they need to do is to participate and liberate themselves using the political process. Make one continue to complain for beer parlor. So now that the candidates have emerged through a heavily cashed induced delegate system, are we still going to continually debate non-issues or set agendas for them and unlike 2015, refuse to be swayed by rhetorics but realizable plans and programs with actualization dates and timeline and follow them through? What are the candidates' proposed plan to reform the concurrent and exclusive legislative list and the general welfare of the people? Nobody's asking. How do they intend to alleviate poverty? I bid them to continue to distribute or cadre during election and ban them thereafter. What do they understand by gender equality and participation? What are their realizable economic development bl blueprint apart from telling us I will revamp this, I will revamp that, or that I belong to nobody, I belong to everybody? What is the value and dignity of the lives of Nigeria to them? What has been their position about wealth creation and where have they created wealth before? Apart from sharing money during and after election and giving political appointments, because to them that's worth creation. What has been their stand on the Land Use Act, fiscal federalism, state police, first subsidy, unbundling of Nigeria, separation of power, and separation of religion from the state? Have they just been paying lip service to the issues of terrorism, open grazing, banditry, subsidizing pilgrimage from Muslims and Christians, police reforms, our population, censors? Local government, legislative and judicial autonomy. What did they don't talk before about all of these issues? What would be their plan, realizable plan about this? Apart from throwing the same campaign promises to us, I will do this, I will construct good road, I will do this. How do you intend to do it? I beg, shine your eyes because the issues, plenty. We don't debate these issues anyway with these people because we would rather create alternative than participate. If us today on strike, we send our children to private universities or abroad if you have the money. Insecurity, they are road. We we'll fly plane to the next destination. Public infrastructures are moribund. We opt for private services. We we'll hire security. We we'll tie our own road. Roads are bad. We we'll buy SUV. Government refuse to create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. We we'll queue up at the embassy to dash out or take to fraud or cut corners to survive. Government stole money meant for providing housing. Then landlord increased rent because he managed build. We cut corners in the office to meet up with the rent and keep up appearance. We face social and societal challenges as a, road, a result of impunity, ineptitude, and low intelligence people in government. We blame village people and run to religious centers who are also scamming us to check whether they, they, they will see vision and create solution. The same solution that 
they use your money to create for themselves. The least plenty, like Yoruba will say, Okboju. I will therefore advocate that until the middle class and middle income earner wake up and look away from the alternative they are quick to jump at and participate in selecting and electing those who govern us, things will continue to move from bad to worse. And the political class will only throw small peanuts to us during election. Remember, there is no Jerry Rollins or Ghani Fahimi coming to liberate us. We are our own liberators that this society needs. That's all for today. If we've struck a chord in you, just simply follow us on all our social media platforms showing on your screen. Like, share, and, and, and speak out. For if vote, no, they count. Nobody go buy them. So don't just be on Twitter and Facebook. Let your votes, voters card speak for you. See you next week.